This is Good Friday. This is the day we find the passion of Christ on display on the cross. We are left like the disciples to watch the display. When we open ourselves to the drama of Good Friday, we enter into the journey to the very heart of God. This virtual labyrinth is a meditation in motion, a path of prayer and presence. Perhaps you are walking a familiar path around your home, or you're driving in your car. You may be slowly pacing in your home. That's the beauty of a labyrinth. It's your own path. Doing a labyrinth quiets the mind. It opens the heart and grounds the body. Some find answers to questions long asked. Some find healing, creativity, a sense of wholeness. What will you find on your labyrinth journey? You're invited to do this labyrinth as if on a pilgrimage, but without a goal beyond the experience of being present in this exact moment. Step consciously and slowly. Breathe deeply. Feel the ground beneath you. Allow the divine to guide you and teach you. You will hear short reflections throughout this journey. Interludes of music are provided to help give you space to be present to your walk and the lingering images and ideas and characters that you hear about. Let us enter in, brothers and sisters, to the drama of Good Friday. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his stripes we are healed. We remember, crucify, we thirst, we remove, we grieve, we wait, and today we enshroud.
I've been thinking a lot about Mark's gospel where Jesus predicts his death, and he says that he has to suffer and be rejected and killed, and after three days he'll rise again. And then Peter displays this beautiful moment of grief um, where he takes Jesus aside and rebukes him and shows that he's in denial about the whole situation. And I think about this in these days because Jesus was laden with a hard truth that he had to tell. And I think about all of the people who are laden with hard truths to tell. Whether it is speaking to a family member to not go outside, or if it is a doctor delivering hard news, or if it's a family member saying, I can't come home anymore. But I think about the way of Jesus in these moments because Jesus spoke this truth plainly, but he also ended it in hope. And while there are hard truths that need to be said, I wonder how we can sprinkle resurrection into our hard truths. I wonder how, like Jesus, we can remind those in grief about the empty tomb, about the three days, about what's to come, and the promise that Jesus gives. Let our words be filled with hope in these days to come. In the 27th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, verse 50, we read, And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Could Jesus, had he chosen, come off the cross? It is a question discussed in numerous documents and books in Christian history. This question that some might suggest is irrelevant is a question I find both interesting and consequential in regard to how I think of God. Some would be quick to say, of course, Jesus could have chosen to remove himself from the cross had he wanted to do so, but I think not. For as I reflect on the cross, I think of it in terms of vulnerability. It appears to me that God was attempting to say to the world, I understand. Not only do I understand, but I choose to fully appreciate the human experience by relinquishing all power. As Paul described it in Philippians, Christ did not accept equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself. Jesus was not just a God with a, a fleshly coating, but the divine, living, life as one of us, which includes the fears associated with having absolutely no control or power in certain moments. It is God 
fully identifying with what it means to be us. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. And the Lord shall bear my spirit home. He rose, he rose, he rose from the dead. He rose, he rose. He rose from the dead. He rose, he rose, he rose from the dead, and the Lord shall bear my spirit home. An angel came from glory and rolled away the stone. An angel came from glory and rolled away the stone. An angel came from glory and rolled away the stone. And the Lord shall bear my spirit home. He rose, he rose, he rose from the dead. He broke a window. He was so angry that he broke that window. His sister was taunting him, this egging him on. A moment of rage, a fist, and then it was all over. He stood there. His anger had leapt out of his hand and onto that glass it had just happened. The anger, now subsided, was replaced by an absolute horror that what he had done was irreplaceable. 
Humpty Dumpty couldn't be put back together, and for all time, that piece of glass, the one with the tinting on it, that piece of glass he knew his parents would not be happy about, it was shattered forever. Explanations would need to be given. Blame would soon be assigned, and that window, that stupid garage door window, would be the mark of his anger. But like the broken garage door window, Jesus is broken. The crowd's actions are judged, and then strangely enough, forgiven. True rejection is horrible. It leaves us on the outside looking in seeing all the people that are part of that party. But who was the rejected in the story? Jesus already knows where he's going. He knows what he must do. He's known it all along. He keeps saying it. We learn it from John the Baptist way back at the beginning of the story when he first sees Jesus. Look, it's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, Jesus is rejected defiled and executed. But what of the apostles? What of his mother? What of Pilate? What of the protesters? What about Jesus' likes and dislikes on Instagram? Is no one going to stand up for the man? Of course not. Because Jesus is doing what he must do. He is fulfilling his role. O oh God of the passion on full display on the cross, on this dark and wounded day, grant us wisdom and grace to see ourselves more clearly. God of every journey, fill us with your deep mystery, your deep silence your deep peace. Amen. <laughs>